Mike Briggs is our cattle market analyst this week. Consumers at the grocery store are being met with some of the cheapest beef in more than a year. The average price for all fresh retail beef and the cost of ground beef fell in December to the lowest mark in 16 months. January's cattle on feed report totaled the number of animals in feedlots slightly below a year ago, but indicated producers were continuing to place heavier feeders. The January cattle report, released after this taping, will reveal estimates on the size of the U.S. herd. If farmers and ranchers have indeed significantly ramped up expansion, it'll show in the cow inventory number. The category on January 1st has been higher than the previous July only twice in the 43-year history of the data, in 1974 and in 1980. We talked with Mike Wednesday afternoon and started by asking about the volatility cattle markets have recently experienced. You've had a lot of volatility because you kind of got the market in a transition period. We've gone from an from a situation of low supply to, a, to an area of where we had a large supply of beef, not necessarily a large supply of cattle. There's two different things there. And now you're going to transition into less cattle and probably less beef because the winter has been so severe it's taken a lot of pounds off these cattle. So it gets less volatile then? Probably not. That's a great question. The, the volatility is kind of here to stay because as long as we're going to let money managers and funds kind of have the, their free reign, they don't make money unless the market moves, and I, I really believe there's an effect there. Plus, you've got this market making a large transition. Have those expanded trading limits helped impact that volatility? I think absolutely, because once you force more than three contracts at limit, the next day those limits go up from $3.00 a hundred to four fifty, dollars and if the funds determine that that's where they want to go, it seems to want to go there. You know. It was just last week we were limit down, limit up. You know, you had a you had a range in cattle in three days that was just ridiculous. Cattle don't change value of $100 a head in three days unless there's an outside event, which once again there was not. Have losses continued in the feedlot? Losses are tremendous and losses are going to continue because all these cattle were purchased at too high of a price. We've made them too big and put more beef on the market with less cattle than we did last year. And you, now even though prices are coming down and it's much better for the consumer, we chased a lot of them off last year and they're slow to come back. What are we looking at per head losses? Uh, average loss for November was $500 a head. Average loss for December was six to $700 a head. So there are tremendous amounts of capital being fleeing the industry. All right, cattle on feed was last Friday. Any surprises there? Yeah, a little bit of disappointment in that the placement number was so big because we haven't seen the sale barn receipts be all that great, and yet we had placements 5% over the guess. So that's a little discouraging. So therefore, your on feed was a little discouraging because it was higher than a lot of people guessed. Now, our marketings were kind of right in there, so that was good. I think as we go for well, once again, we're transitioning, so there's a lot of things going on right now. I want to talk again about the big cattle coming in. The biggest group, over 800 pounds, and the latest cattle on feed report was up 10%. Why does that remain so high? Because so many cattle are outside the feed yard. A lot of ranchers didn't want to sell for those depressed prices in the fall and said, I'll keep them and I'll wean them and I'll feed them. And they fed them up to where they would market them at around that 800, 850 pounds. And so they're coming to market that way. Those guys are trying to dig themselves out of a hole, but I'm afraid they just dug themselves a bigger one. At a certain point in the year, does that start coming down? I don't think it will this year. You're just going to have these big backgrounded cattle all the way into the spring. And I just think that's the way it's going to be. So then conversely, you'll have a bigger animal going out. Are you noticing any more heifers being placed in the feedlot indicating expansion one way or the other? I have not, but I, I personally, we typically do not buy heifers because I think they're terribly unpredictable, especially in these kind of conditions. So we don't buy a lot of heifers, so I don't see a lot of heifers anyway. We're, we run 80, 85% steers around here, so I don't see a lot of heifers anyway. Have you noticed any impact from the cheaper, uh, cheaper beef in the grocery store? I think demand is better. I think it will build as we go into spring because I don't foresee prices getting way out of hand. Um, but have we seen anything miraculous yet? No. It's going to take a while. We chased a lot of people off with those really, really high beef prices, and it's going to take a little bit for them to come back because your competing meats are still so cheap. What's your hope for cattle exports or beef exports more appropriately this year? I would like to see them pick up, but I still think it's going to be a struggle as long as that dollar is so strong, and I don't really 
profess to know what's going to change that. You need to see other economies around the world get better, and I don't know that that's going to be the case. But hopefully, at least now that prices have come down and stabilized, you know, a lot of volatility doesn't help that either. So if we get our prices to stabilize, I think you can see a little better beef demand. I'm asking this to be smart, but what's this winter been like knowing that we could have another storm around this area of the country next week? It's been really tough. I guess this is the third winnest, wettest winter on record. I feel so fortunate now. I've lived through two of those, 83 and now. Um, but so tough that you don't need a coat, so really. Yeah, well, hard. <laughs> anyway, um, it's, it's been really tough and I think it's going to continue. We've had mud for ever since October. It's not going to go away. These cattle are muddy, they're tired, they're cold. It's going to be 50 on Friday and I think Tuesday we have a giant blizzard coming. That is so hard on these poor cattle and there's not a darn thing we can do about it. The, probably the one and only good thing is it's going to take pounds off the market so there's going to be less beef out there so hopefully that helps. Them.